Uh, it's Alex here, Victor Kilo, Two Papa Radio Charlie. Um, yeah, um, another video here in the uh, in the line of Klansman videos. Um, this particular one concerns a um, a fault that I recently had, um, where I decided to go up to my local park where I operate quite frequently and um, and get on the air with this particular radio. I rotate my radios so that they all get a bit of use. And uh, when I got to the park, to uh, to my disbelief. The battery was actually flat on the radio, um, but I was sure that only the day before I'd put a freshly charged battery on the radio. So anyway, um, yeah, so I came back home again, changed the battery, went back to the park, and then I found that I actually had um, no RX on the radio. I was no receive whatsoever. It seemed to be transmitting, but um, as far as receiving was concerned, um, it just wasn't working. So I came home and. Um, had a bit of a look at the line diagram and decided to look for the um, for the usual suspects when it comes to um, these types of uh, RX uh, faults. So let's let's go and have a look at a couple of the uh, the usual suspects. Okay, we've got the radio stripped down. Um, one of the usual suspects is the uh, the transmit changeover transmit uh, receive relay in the um, in in the in the back section, which is the number two section. So easiest thing is to Put a meter on the uh, terminal for the uh, TX, which is your antenna terminal, um, and check out for a continuity test between there and that point right there. That will um, that will check out the um, the relay in here, the changeover relay, and in the receive position, the relay's de-energized, so you should get a circuit between there and there. And in my case, I had a circuit, so I was sort of uh, happy with that. So I moved on to the next bit of a usual suspect or so put that one there aside so the next sort of usual suspect is is the fingers um, down in the in the um, in the turret so I went down here and had a look at the um, the fingers and if you have a close look there you'll see the fingers see how they move um, and if, if people turn the turret in the in the wrong direction those little fingers can actually be damaged and uh, this is a cause of uh, many, many problems when it comes to receive and transmit with these radios. But as you can see, there is absolutely nothing wrong with um, with any of my little fingers on the um, on the radio. So um, I moved along and um, and started to look at um, at possibilities of uh, getting the, uh, the, the the catheter oscilloscope out and checking signals, putting in um, an RF um, an RF signal and and. and following through the uh, the circuitry up here and work my way back to try and find out where the problem was with the with the RX but um, we had a bit of a, a bit of a, a lucky find so as I was actually <clears throat> as I was actually plugging my my power supply here onto the radio I heard a click and when I pulled it off and put it back on again it clicked again the only thing that can click in these particular radios is relays. And I checked and I found out that my set was in fact it switched off. Um, it wasn't turned on at all. So what's going on here? So back on again, click, off again. Aha! This would, would absolutely explain why when I went up to the park the first time the battery was in flat flat. Because even though the radios turned off it's still drawing power from the battery and it's flattened the battery overnight so I, um, I thought to myself gee whiz now it's a, a different sort of problem that's probably related to the no no receive problem because as soon as the battery um, is connected the radio goes into transmit even though it's not transmitting well part of the radio may go into transmit so I headed for the line diagram um, and uh, let's go and have a look at that line diagram and, and, and see what I discovered. So we've got a, um, a relay that's clicking on and off when we apply 24 volts to our radio without the switch being turned on. So let's see how that could possibly happen. I found the battery terminals here on the, live, on the uh, line diagram and they go up here and into the switch. So look, I noticed that the uh, it also goes up here so not only is uh, is it going to the switch but there's other stuff that looks like it's powered at all times even when the sets turned off 
Okay, so we go up here and we identify it's called 24 volt bat. Okay, it goes left and it goes right. I followed the left one, it just goes to a normally open contact. So going to a contact is not going to bring up a relay. So I went right. And across we went. 24 volt bat. Across. Uh, where were we? 24 volt bats, the third one up. Okay. We kept going across. 24 volt bat. And then down she goes. Around here. And it goes on to 1A board. 1A board. Okay, and uh, I see this relay uh, uh, protection device. Okay, now this particular relay de detection device apparently it picks up just prior to the relay picking up, it's in parallel with the relay contacts, and um, it saves the relay contacts so it momentarily takes the full load current of the relay just prior to the relay closing so it protects the relay contact coils and if I follow that through there it goes it comes 24 volt T and if I oops if I follow it down 24 volt T the second one from the bottom there follow it along follow it along follow it along Whoop, up to a relay. So I said to myself, if that device is crook and shorted, that relay will be picked up all the time. Interesting stuff. So what I did, I stuck a meter on 11 by 24 volts, and I put the meter onto the 10 volt, I'm sorry, onto the, the, the number 10 uh, a terminal there, and lo and behold, we had about 12 volts. So, leaking through this device. I also noticed down here we had a voltage too. Where that come from, I've got no idea. But immediately I thought, this is crook. Now, I, I initially thought that this was a, an integrated circuit there where it says driver. But on ins inspection um, of, the, of the 1A printed circuit board, I find that these are two transistors. They're two transistors. I don't have spares for them. But I think I've got a complete spare board uh, in my junked spare set. So I'm heading there right now to see if I've got myself a replacement board to put in here. So, lucky we've got um, the, uh, the spare set. <laughs> uh, I've been using bits and pieces from a, an old spare set for absolute ages. And to my relief, I've gone to my spare set. And uh, there's my 1A board. So um, looks like it's going to be a board change. I would uh, I would doubt that you'd go down to the shop and buy um, the L2, <laughs> uh, the L2 um, integrated circuit, and just swap it over because that's not going to happen. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. To, to gain access to the um, to the 1A board to um, to give it a bit of clearance so you can get around it and um, get the wires off and change it. <clears throat> I've, um, I've removed all of the, um, the screws in the back with the green circles around them. You'll see them here everywhere. Um, all, along, all along that hold the, uh, the, the motherboard in as well. Um, taken all them out. And the whole idea is to, is to move what they call the synthesizer into the service position. Okay, but instead of screwing it in, uh, underneath here into the service position. By the way, there's more of the green screws you've got to take out there inside. Normally you would uh, put screws in into the service position holes, which would bring the the, um, the synthesizer back a little bit. I've decided to uh, put it back a little bit more to give myself a little bit more space. So let's just roll the radio over here and see what we've, what we've actually got. Okay, so looking at it there, I've just put a little bit of wood in there just to hold it out, give me a little bit more room to access more room down in here. So, of course, this is the um, this is the board, um, the one A board, um, and of course, just um, unsolder all the, all the connections. I marked them all with uh, little pieces of masking tape and numbers. Um, actually, made a little diagram there. You could see 
of all of the terminals, a little colour coding on them all so I wouldn't get mixed up. And uh, yep, the old, the old board came out. Let me remove the old board. And, um, and just looking at it, I would say that that's associated circuitry there. Those um, transistor and possibly that IC are, are involved in the um, in the uh, relay protection circuit. Okay, so we've um, been able to uh, to change the com complete board. Um, it's held in by two screws. You see them there, one on each end. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, slip it all back together again. Screw it all back together again. Oh, by the way, I also moved uh, removed the power supply. There it is. There, I removed the power supply to um, to gain a little bit more access around here. The more room um, around there, the better and easier it is to do the job. So we'll screw it all back together and see how we go. Well, I've put it all back together again, um, and I've actually tried it on the air. And um, yep, absolutely fantastic. It receives beautifully and transmitting very well as well, which is quite pleasing. Uh, yeah, to get uh, to get a result like that. Just up, just updating the uh, the little board here, uh, the one that I removed. I actually had a a really good look um, last night at, at the um, at the circuitry for um, for this particular part of the um, of the radio. It's it's a relay contact um, protecting sort of um, uh, a bit of circuitry where when you hit the transmit button, the the transistor here takes the full load current uh, of the relay, um, so that um, it just momentarily does that while the relay closes to protect the um, the contacts on the relay. And in fact, they're, they're two transistors, these two. They're, they're two transistors. And I've looked these two transistors up, and you can actually buy them on um, on eBay, I think. You can get one from Italy and one from um, from Poland, I think. Total cost of these two is around about 30 Australian dollars with postage. So I'll probably be ordering those two, and um, or, or whichever one's faulty anyway. I'll, I'll get into the board there and, um, and do the repairs on the board. And this board will be my spare. Okay, while we've got the radio stripped down to this um, to this to this uh, level, I thought it'd be a, a good opportunity to uh, to go through the um, the receive part of the circuitry on the tuner, so that if anybody in future has any sort of receive issues, um, at least this will give them a, a bit of a guide to uh, to navigate the tuner and get the um, and get the RX signal from the TR terminal down to. <coughs> test point E which is just there test point E on the motherboard okay so before we before we begin our, our test let's just go back on the line diagram and have a bit of a look at uh, what we're going to do okay here we back here we are back on the um, on the line diagram so what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject um, a 7 megahertz signal uh, just to simulate the 40 meter band in here at the TR socket and I'm going to go back back to the tuner up here at the tuner and I'm going to test for that um, for that signal on on A and that should be identical to what I'm you know putting in on the TR socket from my from my RF generator and then secondly <clears throat> I'm going to go over here to the B terminal and I'm going to check um, that waveform on the B terminal it should be very very similar then we're going to go through here the linear RF amplifier. I'm going to go up here onto L, and I'm going to expect the signal to be amplified by the by the um, by the amp amplifier here. So I'm going to get a bigger signal here, same frequency, and then through the very cap tuning, and back out here to F, and at the F point should get a very very uh, nice clean signal there um, at at the same frequency again. Okay, now, now we go down here through the normally closed contact into the RF mixer. And I'm going to go over here to test point, I think that's test point um, D, just there, test point D. And test point D is where the the, uh, the frequency comes in from the, the VFO. And I expect the frequency there to be about 1.75 above the, um, the selected frequency. And that'll be uh, that'll be mixed with the um, with the RF coming from the tuner. Here we've got a buffer amp, which is um, going to clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go down 
and follow that down to the motherboard at test point E, where I should see a resulting signal of about 1.75 megahertz. So what it'll, what it'll actually do here is uh, the mixer will mix the VFO frequency and the received frequency and, um, and give me a, a, res a resultant frequency of about 1.75 megahertz with the RF information loaded onto it. So it's gonna be a bit of a complex waveform going down here and I should be able to pick that up down at the motherboard. So let's dive into the set and, and just follow that through and see how we go. Okay, here we are back in the workshop. I've got my trusty old oldie but a goodie RF generator there set up for about 7.2 megahertz. Let's have a bit of a look at that coming in on the TR socket. That's my son tra uh, training on the trumpet, so <laughs> we'll experience that at the same time. Okay, there's about 7.2 megahertz coming in on the TR socket. And then it goes down here to the tuner. And we're going to pick that up down here on the terminal strip here at point A. So let's have a bit of a look. There's our nice little signal arrived at the tuner. It's going to go through the first section of the tuner. And we're going to have a look on B. And that's it after it's gone through that part of the tuner. So we know that that part of the tuner is working properly. The little capacitors and, and inductors on the, on the tuner are working fine. Then we're going to go through the little, um, little amplifier. And we're going to be picked that up now at L. And there's our signal that's been amplified with a little, a little amplifier there on the, uh, in the tuner head. And then it comes out of there onto F. And there it is on F. Okay, so again, that part of the tuner is working fine. So that's more or less cleared, um, the whole tuner section. Next thing we're going to have a look at down here on test, test point D, which is just there, test point D. That's the signal coming down from the VFO, and that should be about 1.75 above the frequency. So there it is there, eight, eight, about 8.9. Okay, so that's coming down. So what our little, our little um, mix is going to do is going to mix that signal with the RF signal coming in, and we should end up with a, a resultant signal of around about 1.75, a complex waveform, and that should be down here on that test point E. Let's have a bit of a look at that. And there it is. It's very faint. I'll, um, I'll drop the scale down on the, on the crow a couple of divisions. We'll have a bit of a look at that. So there it is, whoops. I'll just get that on right there right there. So there it is, that's the, that's the complex wave coming down from the um, from the tuner head into the motherboard. Okay, so I hope that helps. If anybody in the future is interested in following their, their RF signal uh, from the TR socket down to the motherboard. Okay guys, so, so far so good. Okay, here we go, it's all finished. So I've tested it on the air again. It's receiving beautifully and transmitting beautifully as well. So all I've got to do now is is reassemble the uh, inspection plates here, the, um, the manual tuning, and uh, and put the whole set back together with all the screws, and uh, and we'll be back on the air. So look, just to summarise uh, the particular fault here and, and, and what we did to rectify it, we had a fault with the radio where we had no RX, so no receive at all on any of the bands. I happened to notice that when I disconnected and reconnected the, uh, the cord, um, we had a clicking, um, a clicking sound with the radio turned off and this would certainly um, uh, indicate a relay was picking up and dropping out um, when the radio was turned off and that answers the question of why this particular radio um, would flatten batteries um, even when when it was turned off so a bit of a, a red light there um, followed the circuit through to the 1A board Little, um, little uh, faulty components on the 1A board were, were staying on all the time, even though the, um, the radio was turning off, turned off and picking up relays on the motherboard. So that was our problem. So to, to rectify that, rather than change the transistors that I actually didn't have, I managed to have a spare board. So I, 
oh, well, you would have had to take the whole board off to change the transistors anyway. So disconnected the whole board, uh, pulled all of the components out of the way here to do the job, disconnected the board, put the replacement board back in, and, um, and tested around the terminals there um, that I tested before. Found out that there was no leakage and everything was working fine. No more clicking when I put the uh, lead back on and off. Tested on the air, all working perfectly. And, uh, and just to double check everything, we went through the RX circuitry from the TR socket down to test point E on the motherboard just to demonstrate how that works. Hope you've enjoyed my video, guys. And uh, just another video in the line of uh, Klansman repairs as they come up. Enjoy, guys. Hope to catch us all on the air. This is Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie, saying 73.